So you'll know by now that from tomorrow, anyone aged 18 and up can get the COVID vaccine. Government is hoping this will help stall the slump we've seen in the vaccination rate of late. The daily average has gone from around 220,000 jabs a day at the end of July to just over 120,000 jabs a day currently. A survey of nearly 8,000 people shows acceptance of the jab has grown to about 72%, but the HSRC survey is flagging access to the jabs as still the biggest issue. Let's discuss this and other COVID matters now with vaccinologist Professor Shabir Mahdi, Director of the Vaccines and Infectious Diseases Analytical Research Unit at Wits University. Uh, Prof Mahdi, thank you for joining us. Do you think opening up COVID vaccines from tomorrow for all adults is going to be a game changer? Uh, good evening, Sally. So it's not necessarily going to be a game changer, but it's much more useful to have the vaccines in the arms of people than being in the depot. Uh, the challenge that we face in South Africa is not about the number of people that are vaccinated, but the percentage of the high-risk individuals that are actually vaccinated. So vaccinating individuals between 18 to 35, just to get the number of people that are vaccinated, to get that number up, unfortunately, is not going to lend us in a good space. Uh, should we experience another resurgence, unless we actually get at least 80 to 90% of people above the age of 60, and above the age of 35 with comorbidities vaccinated. Uh, unfortunately, where we are with these vaccines is that they work extremely well in protecting against se severe disease, more than 90% even against the Delta variant. But when it comes to protecting against mild infection uh, due to the Delta variant, the effectiveness is probably in the region of about 50 to 60%. And the majority of people between the age of 18 and 35 uh, really would only benefit of the from the vaccine in relation to being protected, protected against mild to moderate uh, infection. So like I said, it's more than just about a number of people that's been vaccinated. It's about who is being vaccinated. And the goal of vaccination is not just to try to prevent or reduce infection, but rather to minimize uh, hospitalization and death. Yeah, it's interesting the innovations that are being uh, considered now. The Western Cape is, is talking about taking vaccinations to people uh, in pubs and bars and nightclubs, even at funerals. Uh, we've also as just seen a report uh, about a vaccination train that's going to travel to the Eastern Cape. And it's interesting that because uh, the Human Sciences Research Council survey, they flagged not vaccine hesitancy as the big concern, but actually access to vaccines, that we are still battling to get it to people uh, easily. So it's becoming difficult. It's still difficult for some people to get the vaccine. Would you put access as more of a problem uh, than vaccine hesitancy? Absolutely. In fact, in the field of uh, vaccinology and immunization, this is known as a valley of death, where you've got the tools available, but you simply can't get the vaccines into the arms of people. And the reasons for that is multifactorial. But the access is a major driver. So I fully agree with it, uh, that we should have been planning about how to get vaccines into the arms of people uh, around about January already, if not before, uh, rather than pretending that people were going to just uh, uh, wait for the, to register on EVDS and eventually be shepherded to a particular facility. So making ensuring that we actually take vaccines to the people rather than expecting people to come to vaccines is really what's going to assist and that includes vaccinating at the SARS pay points which in fact did happen has happened in some provinces uh, the initiatives by the western cape certainly those sort of initiatives is what's going to make a difference including uh, ensuring that we are vaccinating that high-risk group because my concern is really not the 18 to 35 year olds without any comorbidities they're not going to end up in hospital in any meaningful numbers for the next resurgence. But those that remain under, unvaccinated above the age of 60, above the age of 35 with comorbidities, those are the ones that are going to end up in hospital and unfortunately are at greatest risk of dying from COVID. And then, of course, we've got the Delta variant, which is throwing a bit of a spanner in the works. There's an interesting uh, study uh, I read about it in the Daily Mail uh, today saying it's an Oxford University study. It's suggesting that population immunity is actually not something we're ever going to achieve because they're saying that the jabs protect you from the Delta variant, from actually getting it quite a lot. Uh, but you still will. Uh, have a fairly significant amount of breakthrough infections. And once you catch the Delta variant, even if you've been vaccinated,
vaccinated, you're just as likely to be able to pass it on uh, to someone else. So explain to me the significance of the study and, and the possibility that we might never reach this goal of population immunity. Yes, so I think uh, reaching population or herd immunity uh, was always a, an aspirational goal. And I think I need to, to state up front, uh, no vaccine has ever been developed in the history of mankind specifically to reach herd immunity. Vaccines have always been developed to basically protect against severe disease and to minimize death. And that's the main goal of vaccines. Being able to reach herd immunity is more of a bonus. So what we see with the Delta variant is that depending on when people have been vaccinated in relation to the exposure, the vaccine effectiveness against mild infection due to the Delta variant is anything between 40% and 80%. If you've been vaccinated uh, three, four months ago, you probably got less, effect less uh, protection against the Delta variant than if you've been vaccinated more recently because you get this waning of, uh, immune, of uh, protection against the Delta variant. But people still remain, reduce, have a reduced risk of being infected, including developing mild infection. But amongst those that are infected, uh, it appears that they actually have very high viral loads, similarly to unvac unvaccinated individuals, and they can still transmit the virus. So to get to this herd immunity or population immunity threshold, you need to, for the Delta variant now, we need to get about 85% of the population protected, not against developing severe disease, but against being infected with the virus. They need to be, the protection needs to be prevention of infection and mild disease. And there's absolutely no vaccine available to right. us right now that is able to uh, meet that sort of a measure. Talk to me about what this means for our fourth wave. We're being told that it's coming and that it's coming in December. Uh, and those of us getting vaccinated are going, well, if we're vaccinated, hopefully we'll be able to go on holiday. But you've just painted a picture of waning immunity. Are we looking at a situation where we might be in a pickle come December, even if we are vaccinated, because we're going to be needing boosters by then? No, absolutely not. Uh, the waning of immunity I'm referring to is specifically to mild infection. In all of the studies in Israel, in Qatar, as well as in the United Kingdom, the protection against severe disease remains above 90%. And like I said, if our goal is to prevent uh, hospitalization and deaths, we can experience another resurgence, similar to what has been experienced in the United Kingdom and Israel. And as you saw over the weekend, in the United Kingdom, all of the soccer stadiums were completely full without people wearing masks, despite there being a resurgence of Delta. The reason they've got a comfort of being able to do that is they know that the majority of the population is protected against severe disease and death. So as soon as we can get that high penetration of vaccine into the arms of individuals that are at high risk of developing severe disease and death, we can pretty much get rid of all sorts of inter preventative measures, including mm -hmm. the wearing of face masks, and actually get on with our lives, which is what we need to aspire to. Absolutely. It promises uh, uh, quite a measure of freedom. I have to speak to you very briefly about the numbers because they are alarming. 13,672 new cases. Positivity rate is down 19.9%. So that's, that's good. 317 deaths, still very high. But taking top spot in the provinces now uh, with the most infections is KwaZulu-Natal, 3,911 followed by the Western Cape, 3,700-odd, then Gauteng, then the Eastern Cape. The Western Cape today says they're not dropping yet, they're plateauing, and now we're seeing also KwaZulu-Natal seemingly still climbing. Talk to me about where we are uh, with those coastal provinces and the third wave, because we know that Gauteng is out of its third wave, but concern particularly for those two coastal provinces tonight. Uh, no, that's correct. And I think the Western Cape has peaked, and we're likely to see significant decreases over the course of the next two to three weeks. Unfortunately for KwaZulu-Natal, uh, it is still very much on upward trajectory. And it's probably going to be another three to four weeks uh, before KwaZulu-Natal uh, actually peaks. Uh, what we're basically seeing in KwaZulu-Natal is a combination of a rebound after we went to level, four, level three restrictions, coupled with the type of mass gatherings, the super spreader events that occurred even two to three, three to four weeks ago. Uh, and that is coming back to bite now. Uh, we're always going to experience a rebound when we went from level four to level three, especially in those provinces that hadn't as yet peaked at the time of implementation of level four restrictions. And I think so in KwaZulu-Natal, like I said, unfortunately, they're in a difficult space and you can expect things to get worse over the next three to four weeks. But an important lesson from this experience is we need to stop pretending that by going to higher levels of restriction, we're able to actually prevent hospitalization and death uh, because that's not the case. 
Uh, the only time any province should be put onto higher levels of restriction is when healthcare facilities are being overwhelmed. As was the case at that point in time in Gauteng, but not yeah. in KwaZulu-Natal and not in the Western Cape. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Vaccinologist Professor Shabir Mahdi, Director of the Vaccines and Infectious Diseases Analytical Research Unit at Wits University. It's welcome news that all adults can now get the jab when we must all play our part in taking this life-saving vaccine because it will cut us getting sick quite significantly, which will prevent us, hopefully, passing it on to people who are very vulnerable. It also signals that we could have freedom towards the end of the year.